This is a beautiful piece of furniture just waiting to be finished. All you need here is a little bit of elbow grease, some good sandpaper and a coat of poly and this thing is going to be golden. Wife is going to be beside herself. So this is generally where I keep my sandpaper stuff and sanding supplies. And dude, really? I mean, I got some used stuff here. 220. Oh, here's some 80. And uh, yo, this is ridiculous, man. Let me tell you something. This has got to get fixed. Can't do this anymore. I'm going to make something that's going to make finishing my projects so much easier and faster. I, I've gotten really bad habit lately of not coming up with a full plan. So we are going to see how this turns out, but basically just taking a flat OSB board here and um, I'm gonna put some pegs. I'm gonna use mostly dowels and I've been cutting these up um, and sanding them to get them ready to go into this board. But the basic idea is put a couple dowels here for putting my, uh, I guess, sanding belts. Um, also got some spindle sander stuff, so put some dowels up here, gonna hold that. And of course, you have your five inch disc sanders with the eight hole thing, so a bunch of dowel holes here. The idea is to put these things on the dowel holes and have, I'm gonna have nine different uh, places to hang them so I can separate the grits. Um, I have a little bit of space over here and I'll probably build some kind of a swing out box that's going to hold all my sheet goods, something, you know, like this. Um, you know, then I have some basic handheld blocks and stuff, probably put a shelf on top of this thing and then this whole thing will get mounted right on the wall over there. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, obviously progress has been made. Um, we did get all the dowels uh, glued in. I was short one dowel here, so I have to. I ran out of five sixteenths inch dowel, and if I was a real woodworker, I'd probably make my own. But whatever, <laughs> that's another job for another day. Um, so we got like the belts all you know separated based on grit, and these are the belts that go on my oscillating spindle sander here. Uh, we also have uh, the different grits of spindle sanders for the spindle that you can swap that out for. And, uh, you know, it came with like, you know, one set and they, you can see they're pretty much almost worn out. These were trash and so I've already assimilated those from this right there. So anyway, good place to store them. You can see how the discs are uh, fit right on these dowels right here. Um, and I got a bunch of more sandpaper coming. I ordered off of Amazon. I'll show you a link to what I ordered um, and I'll give you a little review because I'll probably use it a little bit and see if they're worth it. You know, they got some cheap sandpaper on Amazon and uh, I'm worried that it's trash, but I will find out and I will let you know. Okay, so uh, this big OSB board that I showed you before, I just tacked it up there with some brads and then drove a couple uh wood screws in there and that is not going anywhere <clears throat> i've added a, a little bit of a frame this is some real piece of crap wood that i uh, salvaged it had a skip plane down because it was all water damaged and rotted and anyway <clears throat> just cut uh some pieces to length and these actually these frames are not attached to the usb that's attached to the wall they're actually pocket hole directly into the wall and then they're tacked to each other with brads through the side. Um, so it's not like I built this cabinet with this frame and then installed the whole thing. I just put that OSB up against the wall and then I just started adding this framing around it and attaching that directly to the wall and to each other. Like there's some brads going through the tops and bottoms of these boards, but nothing is attached to the OSB board. It's just kind of the way it's stuck going together. It's weird. Um, but it creates a nice little shelf up top for my sanders. Um, this is the box that I have designated for the sheet goods. 
and this is just going to be like some shelving that they can put random uh, torn up pieces of uh, uh, sanding paper um, that I'm saving and then I got a bunch of that stuff down here all right so this is the box <clears throat> the box I'm making for the sheet goods and basically uh, it's going to be able to hold uh, two rows of sheet goods here and here and then I got multiple layers here so I should be able to get like 10 different grits I think I have five or six, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, twelve. So I get twelve different, like, uh, grits of sandpaper sheets uh, stored in here once it's put together. But I kind of, I, I kind of made it too small, so I'm, like, really squeezed for space here. Uh, so it's a painstaking process of uh, gluing down a little divider here for the sheets to sit on. Uh, then sliding another piece into a groove here glue another piece down on top of that, slide another piece in, glue another piece, until we get to the top, and uh, then the box will be done. But actually what I gotta do now is I gotta uh, just cut a little, little cut out here so you can reach and grab the paper. Uh, otherwise it'd be like trying to get the edge of it. Uh, it's gonna make it easier to grab hold of, so that's what we're doing right now. All right, well, uh, got this finished, all glued up. Uh, you kind of see what it looks like. Um, just got to cut these things off. They're sticking out a little. I think I'm just going to use this, like, I call it a vibrant tool. Some people call it an oscillating tool, but it basically, let's see how this works. Maybe it's the right tool, maybe it's not the right tool, but this is really soft uh, redwood, so it should go through it pretty easily. Let's take a look-see. Okay, well, if you want to know how to butcher a job, that's how you do it. Um, pretty simple. <laughs> Doesn't really matter. Uh, this is just going to hold some uh, some sandpaper. So this is going to go in here like this, and boom. All right, so that was a done deal. Let's uh, let's get this mounted uh, over here on my. All right, well, you're looking at pretty much the finished version of uh, the sandpaper rack. It's been in a couple weeks since I uh, finished this up, so it's got it pretty well loaded up. Um, you can see I've got all my sanders now stored across the top, and you know it's really easy to see exactly where all my sanders are, and I don't have to go digging through the, the shelf on the bottom of the workbench anymore, so that's nice. Um, you know, I did have a extra... Uh, spots for sandpaper and actually turns out to be a good place to put some of the semi used paper You know as you're uh, using it um, and it's not completely spent um, May don't want to put it back in the rack with the brand new stuff So I just put it on like some of these empty ones and you know, I'll use those up first as I go along um, I did add a couple shells in here just for some sanding accessories I got blocks and pads and uh, you know some half use sheets quarter use sheets um, some uh, oscillating tool sanding stuff and uh, you know some uh, attachments to help us hook these up to the shop vac. Uh, one of the things I did do I mean, we had the uh, the box for the sheet goods here and you know it was just a piece of Lawan that had been torn up so I just cut uh, some decorative strips here and uh, glued them to the face uh, to hide like <laughs> the kind of the chipped up edge and uh, also it provides like a good a good Place to grab a hold of it to open the door. Uh, now I don't have to really put a door knob or a handle on here because this does stick out. Um, and this is really working out well. You know, I got some uh, dry, regular dry sandpaper, some wet sanding paper down here, um, some of the half sheets and quarter sheets I can store in here as well. Um, and uh, you know, it keeps everything very organized, really easy to get to. 
I know where everything is and what I have and what I don't have now. And wow, this is like such a huge difference. Uh, it's weird. I mean, I almost like makes me enjoy sanding a little bit. Is that possible? Not really, but it, it does take a little bit of the, uh, I don't know, the unpleasantness out of like hunting down papers and everything else. So it's good. Um, I highly recommend this. Well, now that I got this done, let me just finish up on that job I started before on the awesome jewelry box. And I'm just going to show you what a good finishing sandpaper job can do in a minute. Okay, folks, so it's, uh, can't express to you just how important it is to start off with the right paper. This is 60 grit, and you're going to need something aggressive to take down these like little rough edges here. You know, with the proper elbow grease and the right amount of, uh, um, know-how you can turn something like this into a masterpiece in short order uh, first thing you do is you want to make sure you use dust um, prevention whether you got a mask or I, I like to use my vacuum cleaner Well, we finished up here, went all the way up to 320 grit, and uh, you know, the magic of sandpaper and polyurethane, and this is the kind of excess you can expect to have. And all it starts with is organizing your sandpaper into a nice rack like that. What are you guys waiting for? Let's get started.